Good morning. Welcome to the conversation at Teal West Television Network, your digital first for an African news network. It's Monday morning, the start of a new week. I hope you're geared, you know, for the week. The conversation comes to you, you know, every weekday from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. My name is Adesu Walsi. And my name is Merciful Ajinomo. Good morning, Adesu. Good morning, Merciful. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> How are you doing? All right. I'm very well. Thank you. All mm -hmm. right. In the spirit of a new week, we'll bring you the quote of the day. Yes, that's a Monday morning motivation from Strive Masiyiwa. So you just know having a vision is never really enough. You have mm. to put in the work, right? Yeah, definitely. Because a vision is like a picture. Mm. So when you have a picture, you have to make sure that becomes a reality. Exactly. So you now have to be dedicated, mm. committed, and put in the hard work to make sure that that vision becomes a reality, basically. I do think Masifu is going to make money as a motivational speaker. Hmm. I think about it sometimes, <laughs> you know. It's like aspire to perspire and everything. <laughs> All right. It was straight into development across Africa, starting from here in Nigeria, where Nigeria's president, Mohamed Buhari, has arrived Paris, France, on a four-day official visit to attend the African Finance Summit. Spokesman Gary Bache, who disclosed this in a statement on Saturday, the summit is to be hosted by French President Emmanuel Macron. The summit will be focused on reviewing African economies following shocks from coronavirus pandemic and getting relief, especially from increased debt burden on countries. It will also attract major stakeholders in the global finance institutions and some heads of government who will collectively discuss external funding and debt treatment for Africa and private sector reforms. During the visit, President Buhari is expected to meet with Macron to discuss growing security threats in Sahel and Lake Chad region, political relations, economic ties, climate change, and partnership in buoying the health sector, particularly in checking the spread of COVID-19 with more reset and vaccine. That's a packed package. Mm -hmm. Still about news from across Africa, we move to Mali, where a broad-based transitional government is set to be formed in Mali. The army-dominated interim government of Mali is set to form a new broad-based cabinet. Malian Prime Minister Mokhtar Wane is to be in charge of the reshuffling. According to the transitional president, Bandao, Wani had resigned on Friday but was immediately reappointed. And Wani was named prime minister after military officers in August removed the elected president, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. He pledged to reform the constitution and state elections within 18 months. Last week, good luck, Jonathan, for my Nigerian president and the economic community of West African state, ECOWAS mediator for Mali, warned that there was little time left to complete the reforms. Okay, still here in Nigeria. Um, this is coming from um, something that has to do with the Shogo rally. Men of the Nigeria Police, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps have shut down Nelson Mandela Freedom Park, Shogo, the venue of the Yoruba Nation mega rally on Saturday. Uh, according to TOS News, a Motec and Corps were also positioned at a strategic spot to prevent participants from accessing the venue. Participants had subsequently regrouped under the November 27 bridge along Oshobo Bogon Road, um, in Oshobo. Operators of the Department of State Service, that's the DSS, Nigeria Police Joint Task Force, that's the JTF, Amarteco, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, and local vigilante were all positioned at Freedom Park, the scheduled venue of the rally and other strategic spots, including Okefia, Old Garage, Alekwodo, Olaya interjection and Fagbewetsa, apparently to prevent participants from the mega rally. The protesters, however, regrouped under November 27 bridge around Neko office along the Shogu Bongo Road or Shogu for the rally. And talking about COVID-19 and Kenya battling a third wave of the virus, hospital in Nairobi has moved to install more oxygen units as Kenya's third wave of the coronavirus poses great threat to the country's healthcare system. And with more cases of the virus being reported daily in the country, the health officials have now taken the initiative to increase the capacity of life-saving elements so as to prevent the current nightmare scenario currently unfolding in India due to oxygen shortages. 
It was reported that on the roof of the Metropolitan Hospital, a 150-bed private institution that targets the middle class, a brand new oxygen production unit that is capable of producing up to 600 litres of gas per minute has just been installed. Metropolitan CEO Kanyan Jen Gankombe said the hospital accelerated plans to produce its own oxygen after supplies were squeezed to the limit during the height of the third wave found by the variants of the coronavirus first detected in Britain and South Africa. Mm. And with that, we'll bring you a COVID-19 update from across Africa. That was COVID-19 update from across Africa as guided by the Africa Center for Disease Control. Now, you did hear Mesfo say that Kenya uh, is already hit by the third wave of you know, COVID-19 and they're gearing up for the worst case scenario mm -hmm. as we have in India where you have oxygen shortage and we have you know, spiraling death cases and all of that. That's Kenya. Kenya is in Africa. We don't have to deal with all of that. So just do your part, as I always say every morning while I come here, do your part so we don't have to, you know, have to think about battling a third wave or having to lose more people and all of that stuff. We can't deal with that. So do your part so you, me, and the next person can be safe. I mean, I, I want to see Mess for you here every month. Every Definitely. Day. I want so, to see you too. Exactly. So basically, we have to do our part to make sure that I'm safe and he's safe so we can keep mm -hmm. seeing each other, mm -hmm. you know, every day. And you should do that as well. Don't okay? forget prevention is better than cure. Exactly. Always. All right. So we move straight up. We're going to go on a break. And when we come back, it's a time to take you through, uh, you know, newspaper headlines for this morning. Available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live, watch out for the latest update on sport and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths that question the status quo and fact checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism where the prison of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget they lose, some of them sleep. They're going to ask how much you are on. I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Igbenaja, and I am the People's Journalist. Welcome back to the conversation showing on your digital first Pan African news network. Don't forget, like I always tell you, you can always be a part of it by joining us our social media community and following us across all our social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at TOS TV Network. And don't forget, you can also live stream our programs on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. And if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel to, uh, so you don't miss out on amazing um, content, Please do so now and, you know, just stay abreast of what's happening here in Abuja, Nigeria and also Africa. It's the conversation and this is the newspaper review segment of the show where we'll bring you the update on what's happening um, in, in Nigeria 
also Africa. Uh, we begin with Blueprint this morning from the very top. Train equipped military on modern weapons to resolve insecurity. That's coming from the past president of Nigeria, IBB. And then we have a couple of riders on in that story. The first is youth block road with four corpses in Benue. And the second gunman killed DPO, two sergeant, raised police station in Delta. Uh, under that story, we see $400 million arbitration claim puts China loan at risk. We can get that on page 24 of the Blue Phoenix newspaper. Just besides that, UBA leads in CSR spending in 2020. Companies donate 32.4 billion naira, and we can get that on page 24. The very obvious headline there 15 years after, 42.3 billion naira Abuja Lokoja Road still work in progress. Uh, a couple of writers on their story. The first communities blame delay on indigenous contractors. Say, highway death trap robbers, kidnappers then. It's tough and hellish plying the road coming from the motorists. Necessary approvals needed to get work completed. Coming from the contractor and um, from the federal government, they say work is 95% ready, December handover date feasible. And we can get all of that on page 6 of the Blueprint newspaper. Underneath the pictures of the day, Aerofy battle ready as workers protest ground Kaduna. And that's on page 15. Jonathan Buck's Governor's Forum is platform for crisis resolution. And that's on page 5. FCTA demolishes Nike Junction Taxi Park. Uh, that we can get out on page 9 of the Blippi newspaper. Article to NGF, convene National Unity Summit of all Nigerian governors. That's on page 6. And the very last headline for the Blippi newspaper this morning, talking about Salah Dubar. Bauchi Emir suspends federal lawmaker over content. Uh, we can get that on page 5 of the Blippi newspaper. Okay, looking at the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. The first headline there says, Shun antagonism, Jonathan tells Southern Northern Governors. Um, planned $250 million funding for national carrier unsettles operators. Gunmen kill three policemen caught away rifles in Delta State. And the banner headline on the Daily Church newspaper this morning. Uh, persecuted at home, Igbo Muslim troop to North for Sokor. More in North at present than in entire Southeast. Marginalized in civil service, political appointments. Many practice Islam secretly. There are no discriminations, Emo Enugu governments. And just underneath the picture of the day, article to governors, convey national unity, submit. Um, workers strike, we are ready for you, Aerofire tells NLC PDP. Um, gunmen kills four villagers, vandalize Marnek's home in Benue. And the last headline there says, or your deputy governor, um, stop attaching criminality to Fulani. And over to the Nigerian News Direct newspaper, at the very uh, the top uh, headline there says, NITDA warns Nigerians of new cyber attack strategy. Uh, we can get all of that on page 29. Lottery Commission to introduce central monitoring system for enhanced government revenue. Coming from Fermi Bagj Bamila, and that's on page 32. Workers suck, NLC to shut down Kaduna on Monday. Uh, we can get out on page 8, the very gaping headline there, the banner headline, liquidity squeeze. Banks, others, borrow 4.4 trillion naira from CBN. How uh, we can get out on page 29. Underneath the picture of the day, Buhari travels to France for African Finance Summit. Uh, that's on page 29. And the last one, Petten, set to host 5th uh, Sub Saharan Africa International Petroleum Exhibition Conference. You can get out on page 30 of the News Direct. And looking at the business day this morning, you know, the very top where you have the business day market monitor. And then just the main headline on the business day this morning says, as in NPA, ministerial power play holds up new board for TCM. That story is continued on page 29. Um, the editorial segment in Nigeria, kidnapping is war on education. You can read up that story on page 12 of the business day. Agric lending at five year high, Agric lending at five year high fails to reflect in food prices. That's on page 29 as well. And then the last um, headline on the Business Day newspaper, Nigeria's pathway for a debilitating petrol subsidy regime. You can read that on the back page of the Business Day newspaper. And to the very last headline our newspaper daily this morning is the Daily Times. From the beginning, it's Can you please command celebrate sergeants for returning 1.2 million naira found at accident scene. I uh, can get that on page four. Uh, the banner headline there, Bebangida, Jonathan asks Buhari others, task Buhari others on governance insecurity. That's on page two. Underneath the picture of the day, insecurity, three police 
men slain as gunmen burn station mm. and six commercial banks post 235.4 billion naira pat uh, that's on page 29 and uh, dialogue southern governors call for dialogue gets more support you can get that on page 18 and 19 of the daily times newspaper mm -hmm. and that's all we have for you for the newspaper seg um, review segment of the show this morning just grab a copy and stay updated on what's happening around you that's it on newspaper review segment of the show this morning we're going to break now and return Today's so I'll be taking us through what's trending on social media to stay. Welcome back. It's still the conversation on TOS Television Network. And it's about that time where I bring you what is trending on social media. What hashtag or what topic of discussion made it to the top of the trend table on social media in the last 24 hours. But before we get you know, into all of that, talking about social media, you do know, like right now, you should know that you should follow TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. You have to be a part of the conversation, right? So you can do that by joining TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube so you don't miss out on anything also you can stream the conversation and every other lineup that we have for you on www.tostvnetwork.com okay straight into you know what has been trending on social media in the last 24 hours and then hashtag dr anu has been trending on social media in the last 24 hours i think it's number two on the trend table right now it was number one for you know most part of uh, yesterday was number two on the trend table right now and then you, dr anu is actually a popular cosmetic surgeon who runs a cosmetic um clinic you know in lagos a part of lagos and she's been a very controversial one because she's been back and forth you know in and out of the news over botched surgeries um and then some of them have led to have been very fatal and i think two persons you know died as a result and there's been a back and forth you know over that one what happened was it because of her was the surgery gone wrong or was it the patient that didn't you know um, adhere to you know instructions and all of that so that has been in the court back and forth but she's back to the fore again over another botched surgery and this time it was over at somebody's um ass so a lady went to do a butt implant i don't know what it, what, what was that, um the aim of what she wanted to do but yeah and then that got botched seriously and then it got social media talking and i'm going to read out a few tweets you know to that regard for you the first one is from at miss underscore vera dr anu has butchered another person's ass the picture itself is disgusting why do women do this after all this shout we shout for social media uh, mr manhere underscore says anybody that goes to that dr anu woman at this point doesn't deserve your sympathy there's the internet with all its vital information, but you chose to ignore it. You're on your own. Um, Max, say, share. Well, I don't feel sorry for victims of Dr. Anu. Her info is literally all over social media. But in the spirit of it's not my portion, they go with faith, falling for the same trap while expecting a different result. You literally chose to blow your anus yourself. Oh, your anus yourself. Oh, I get that one. And then this one is from at Tommy underscore Vissetti. You signed a disclaimer form with Dr. Anu before going under the knife, even after the bad track record she already has. You thought yourself will be one of her success case. Now she has sports your yash and you're coming to cry to us. That person, the person that's where for you has died. Merciful. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this one? Okay. First of all, um, what do you think about you know cosmetic surgery generally? Yeah, yeah. So, so first of all, yeah, people should be left to do whatever they want to do with their okay. bodies and, and everything. Yeah, yeah, but we should put in mind that there's what we call morality. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, secondly, I I think it's high time we started. 
teaching our young ones that they should learn to respect themselves. Mm. They should learn to love themselves the way they were created. Mm. Because going to tweak something, now, this is the creation, right? Mm. This is my body. Mm. So if I do not feel, I'm feeling, oh, this is not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be like this, I'm supposed to have some sort of tweak to make sure there's, there's going to be side effects. Mm. Like we keep seeing it on the news. There is no 100% perfect shape. Is it not going to happen now in the future? But people know these things, yet they still end up at the other side of, of the fence, oh. saying, oh, whatever happens, let me just do it. Mm. Do you understand? So I think it's people it. should expect this. Yeah, mm. I, I'm, from what someone was saying, one of the, the, the tweets, you have signed something, yeah, whatever it is, like you phone, paid yeah. and you have signed some stuff. So it's expected. We really should not, we should, we should not blame her. Or is really? It? It's the people that go there. She doesn't force anyone. Okay, the thing is, another thing is, mm -hmm. okay, first of all, I'm not against cosmetic surgery at any mm -hmm. point. I'm, I think I'm one of those persons that, that, that feel as though, look, if something is going to make you comfortable or make you confident or help you boost your confidence, by all means, do it. If you have the money for it, just do it. If I want a flat stomach and I feel like I'm going to get a lipo to do to get that one, and that's how, it doesn't mean I don't love myself. It just means I want to, you know, love myself more mm -hmm. or, you know, get my confidence back or something. I would do it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So I'm not again. But Dr. Anu is not, I think she's one of, she's a certified, you know, cosmetic Yes, surgeon. cosmetic surgeon. She's certified. She went abroad to study. And she's, so it's, it's, it's and, and then for her to actually have a cosmetic clinic in Nigeria, meaning she probably has gone through processes. Yeah, and she's got the certification. Her, yeah. Yes, that look, you can actually run this operation in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame people who actually go there and say, okay, we want to do it. Because I know she's, in as much as she's had botched cases, they're also success cases, right? Definitely. So, but it's, I, I don't know what the balance is. Because it's, it's, but I don't know that they have to now look into it. Like, what is happening? What is happening? Because I know somebody had gone and then she had died and another person had died and another person had been bedridden or having to, you know, go in and out of the hospital. Uh, you know, all of that stuff. And then my two cents here. I think it's, it's basically like you're going to the hospital to mm. fix something. Yeah. Mm. You're going to the hospital to make sure your health is checked mm. or you're going for a surgery. Mm. It is a surgery whether you like it or not. And yeah, every, surgery, every surgical procedure, there is that percentage of failed processes, yes. of procedures. So yeah. if you, um, from, what, from what you said, so I think a couple, maybe two pe people, or oh, anything. But two. Yeah. So, and she must have done a lot. Mm. So, we have to, we have no choice but to plan for some cases where there will be some failed procedures, whether you like it or not. Yes, but <laughs> I mean, to not be the one, like I'm going in, so I'm, My I, point. Like, I might be the failed case. No. My point. So basically, I, I don't know, I think maybe the Nigerian government or the cosmetic, I don't know if they have an association like that, you know, that checks your cosmetic um, surgeries or, or doctors or all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Just look into it and see if they have to maybe say, okay, stop practicing for a while. Let's look into this and let's yeah. see what happens. So let's people just go are safe. back and forth because it's, it's, she's always coming to the fore of a botch surgery and then somebody has died. So, mm -hmm. and then they need to look into it, right? I'm not, I mean, if you're going to feel comfortable with your cosmetic surgery body, just do it. But by all means, don't kill yourself, you know, trying to get trying that to body that you actually, you know, really want. All, all right. right. Okay. That's it for what's trending on social media this morning. We'll go on a break now. And when we come back, it'll be time to bring you the big story. So, unfortunately, we will not be able to bring you the big story this morning, but the big story will be back on the show tomorrow. With that, it's a wrap on the conversation this morning. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Don't forget, you can be a part of the conversation by following TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. That's TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also subscribe on YouTube so you're not left out of amazing content. And you can stream the conversation on www.tostvnetwork.com. Com. My name is Ade so I'll see you. And I am Mesafol Ajinama. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing week ahead. Bye for now.